Now we just need to put the video in a proper spot so it's not sitting right on top of our welcome screen. Now, just like everything else, the video is sitting right in a keyframe, so it's right here on frame 1. And basically all we need to do is find it a home. I'm going to go down past the end of the sports animations, and let's put our video down here about at frame 80. I'd like a label for it as well, so I'm going to make that first. I'll click in the Labels layer at frame 80. I'll press F6. And of course, use the Control key if you need to for using your function keys. I'll go over and label that frame video. And now we can use it in our navigation just like the other labeled frames. I'm also going to bring my video frame right down here. So I'm going to scoot back to the beginning, select that video keyframe first, and then after it's selected, I'll grab and move it down. And then we'll drop it into position right underneath the label. Now, of course, I don't want the basketball animation showing, so I'm going to insert a blank keyframe, that's F7 right down below it, and that'll make sure that that's been removed. And now we can grab our video and we can actually place it wherever we want to on the stage. I'm just going to drop it down a little bit and then add a little space here between the buttons. Now we're going to need to set up some navigation for it, so what I'd like to do is add another button down here below the sports animations, and we're going to make it part of our submenu. We're going to need a button, so let me just grab the basketball one down here from the bottom. I'll also shift click on the label, and that way I can grab both pieces. And I'm going to hold my Alt key, or Option if you're on the Mac. Hold that down while you're dragging, and you will make a copy, just like before. Now while I've still got them both selected, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to nudge it right back up into place, so it looks nice with the rest of the set. I'm also going to change the label on it. Let me double click on Basketball, and we'll just change that to Video. And last but not least, let me go over to my normal selection tool. Don't forget that we have to change the instance name of the button. When we copied that button object, we got everything including the old name. And I don't want to call this one Basketball BTN, I want to call it Video BTN. One thing you definitely don't want to do is use the same name, so make sure all of your button names are unique. Now we're ready to set up our action script. Remember, the first thing I have to do is put the playhead where we want the action script to go. So let's find the action script for our other submenu buttons. It's right here at the top of our sports layer. So I'm going to make sure my playhead's sitting at that spot. Then I'm going to click on the button, and we'll go ahead and bring up our code snippets window. I think once again I'm just going to tuck that over here on the side in case we need it later. And I'll click inside the Timeline Navigation folder, and we'll go back to our Click to Go to Frame and Stop. Now let's take a look at what our code snippet added here. Just like before, we have to change that frame 5 to our video label. And don't forget to put it in quotes. And then I want to take a look at this function here as well. Now notice once again, we've got the same function name, FL click to go to and stop at frame, but that's the one that we used the very first time. Now in a real ActionScript project, we need to have unique names for our functions just like we need to have unique names for our buttons. And when you're using code snippets, it's a good idea to check these functions because we don't want the program to accidentally use the same name twice. Now if we look up here just a little bit, we can see the code that was added for our other frames. You can see it goes to FL click to go to and stop at frame 5, and the one before that is 4. So what I'm going to do is change the function name to be the next logical name, which would be underscore 6. I'll just click on the end of this function and change that name real quickly. And of course, we've got to change the matching function name down here as well. Now let's go and try out our new video. I'm just going to go to Test Movie. And we'll click on our Sports button. There's our new video button, and it looks like it's working. And when I click it, we've got video just like before. You can see that all the controls work. We can pause it, and I'll go ahead and close that up. And now you can see that we've not only inserted our video into our project, but we've placed it at the correct spot in our navigation system. Now, we're probably going to need this Actions panel later, so I'm just going to dock it down here at the bottom. I'm just waiting for when the blue line appears, and then I can double click on the gray bar to close it up.